Good evening everyone, time for another Bitcoin report. Let's start out with the chart tonight. Uh, we had the big news, of course, that hit when the uh, block reward was cut in half from 50 Bitcoins to 25. So the big question is going to be how much of an impact does that have on the market? You can see we actually had a downturn that coincided with that, but now we're rallying out of that. And a lot of people have asked the miners how many miners are going to stop mining based on that. You can see the spread of the uh, bids and asks. Uh, generally, the thing I look for here is uh, how far below the price we are. We're at it 12.46. So uh, if we go down, uh, you can see that uh, the last visible, we've got about 2,700 uh, total coins being bid bidded for that's not the number of orders that's the number of bitcoins at uh, about uh, 0 0.4 0 0.35 away and then we've got a pressure of about 4,000 here and that's uh, just above it so uh, from that perspective uh, it's a little bit bearish there's more pressure on the selling side but we'll see when we get up into that range of where those orders are you can see a lot of those orders are hanging above the market right above here now you can see that the resistance big resistance is going to be at about 13 that is going to be the last high that we had after this spike high and you can see that we didn't spend very much time at all at that high if we go out to I think we're out the furthest to daily right so uh, there was just a, a very short amount of time spent above that price so we're watching 13 very closely and then we're watching to see if it can maintain that and uh, do ultimately a challenge of 15 remembering that the high was all the way back above 30 uh, over a year ago so let's get to the stories there's a lot of stories fast and furious I haven't actually been able to keep up the blog but before we do that let's go over to uh, a question of the night and uh, this is from some symbol and he asks is Bitcoin created by the powers that be why would they want to create Bitcoin to easily transfer funds across borders with no oversight by governments easily able to fund opposition groups to maintain economic power in a future where the dollar is weaker early adopters of Bitcoin make more Bitcoins the government have the ability to hack and steal coins and blame it on someone else ie exploits infected executables they would only need to obtain the private key then they can wait for as long as they want until they harvest all the bitcoins inside a wallet the government might have secret supercomputers quantum computers that can calculate all the private keys of the bitcoin addresses created thesis is we need money independent of government the antithesis would be bitcoins and synthesis would be they crash the market when it's at the top and then come out with their new solution old one again government commodity based money fiat in secret they are also diverting money that would normally flow into gold and silver many bitcoin enthusiasts are also pm bugs please excuse uh, excuse my bad english i hope this message got through and so there's a number of questions here now the big question of course is the bitcoin created by the powers that be i i can't give you a definitive answer on that um the idea has been around for quite some time the original article i posted it on the blog about uh, a cryptocurrency in the future of cryptocurrency and uh, the anarchy of cryptocurrency uh, that was 1992 paper I don't remember who the writer was but so the ideas have been around for a while Bitcoin is really one of the first uh, very good implementations of some of these ideas now Bitcoin is not perfect it doesn't have what a lot of people would desire which would be complete anonymity and the ability to purge the records uh, I don't think those are really big drawbacks uh, were the powers that be behind it well possibly are they behind uh, an idea whose time that's come was the Catholic Church behind the invention of the printing press I don't think so so when we compare it to the printing press I think that's the Gutenberg press is probably the best comparison I can think of uh, it had the power to break the uh, stranglehold that the Catholic Church had 
on the interpretation of the Bible. And of course, that was what caused the Protestant Revolution and some would argue the Enlightenment. So the question is, does the Bitcoin uh, fulfill the role of this future thing or will it be something else? Well, it very well could be something else. What's important about the Bitcoin is the idea, the idea of a cryptocurrency the idea that's contained in the Bitcoin. If Bitcoin isn't the one, which I am still going to guess 70% chance that it is the one, that it wasn't created by government, that uh, Satoshi Nakamoto was who he says he is, I think. And uh, that's my guess at this point. But even if it isn't, uh, if you think about the Gutenberg Press, the first Gutenberg Press invented uh, for all we know, the first one was seized, but didn't matter because the idea got out and they made others and that changed the world. So it doesn't really matter to me whether or not this particular incarnation of a cryptocurrency is the uh, final one or the successful one or uh, whatever that, uh, whatever you want to call that. But what's important is the idea is out. The cat is out of the bag. And uh, this is the key phrase, money that is independent of government. So uh, as to diverting money from gold and silver, well, the money that's going into Bitcoin is just so tiny, it's ridiculous to even talk about. I think the market cap's $100 million. Now, the market cap on gold and silver is also ridiculously low. Traditionally, gold and silver represent 20% of investments. They're only about 1% right now, so gold and silver have to explode in their percentages. And then, of course, the amount of paper, fiat, digits, and computers, and currency that's out there is in the hundreds of trillions and potentially other uh, others have even pointed out that we're into the quadrillions so i don't see a competition between bitcoin and gold and silver i think they both can grow they serve different purposes gold and silver are a store of value uh, bitcoin is a medium of exchange uh, bitcoin is far superior uh, than gold and silver as far as being a medium of exchange and gold and silver are far superior to Bitcoin so far as being a store of value so they serve different purposes they're complementary I think they go very well and uh, of course I have a silver channel and a Bitcoin channel so uh, that's my opinion on that now let's get to some of the big stories uh, really important ones uh, one of the first ones is the in trade story it was not covered in a lot of the mainstream press. It was in the blogs and the alternative media. Now, it was covered here by Jeff Berwick, who is someone I follow on my silver blog. Excellent. Uh, he's a anarchist who is uh, outside of the United States, and he does a very good story here on uh, the in-trade issue. Basically, what happened is that a ruling from the CFTC caused, uh, threatened, fines caused uh, in trade to shut down their trading uh, for American citizens so let's read this um, well I'll just start from the beginning reports have been swirling around the death of another business at the hands of a US government agency while these reports weren't totally true as usual the US government has squashed any attempt by unfree US citizens to do what they want in trade is still alive and kicking, although it probably wouldn't be if it was based in the U.S., minus its U.S. customers for now anyway. As of December 23rd, 2012, all U.S. accounts with in trade will be suspended thanks to the meddling of the CFTC. This is Commodity Futures Trading Commission. These are the same guys who have been investigating the silver manipulation for four years. Can't find anything. While Intrade itself isn't dead, its founder is Irish businessman John Delaney. Founded Intrade in 2001, he died at age 42 in an attempt to realize his lifelong goal of climbing Mount Everest. He was just 50 meters from the peak. Since his body wasn't able to be recovered, he's still there. Delaney was born in 1969 near Dublin, where Intrade would later be based. He got his MBA in finance from the University College of Dublin and a career as an investment banking banking he got online gambling in 1999 for those of you who are unfamiliar with in trade this company simply allows anyone to bet on yes 
or no events in the real world. You can literally bet on anything with a yes or no outcome. Examples listed right now on how the site works section are the Dow Jones close above 13,000 on December 30th, 2012. Barack Obama to be re-elected president 2012 United States or Israel to bomb Iran before the end of 2012. Note the second example, that's a little dated. They should have replaced it with CFTC to forbid U.S. customers from using our website. I would put a hard money on that one. Easy call. It's actually very simple and serves a very basic desire among humanity to try to predict events and make, make a little money by being right. What's more, uh, since there's money on the line, the players tend to have the best information available to make the best possible guesses. Is it accurate? That is to say, do the majority of bettors on in-trade tend to be right about the outcomes on which they're betting? Amazingly so, as you'd expect the case to be in a semi-free market when money is on the line. Having something to lose tends to sharpen performance. Uh, government should probably take a lesson from that. The reason entrepreneurs and business people will always make better decisions than politicians. In 2011, professional pundit Rachel Weiner admitted, quote, the site's collective wisdom tends to be more reliable than the cadre of professional pundits when it comes to forecasting election results. She continues, in 2008, betters got only two states wrong, Indiana and Missouri. In 2004, the site got every state right. You can listen to the immoral talking head James Carvel yammer on about all his picking of the elections, but he never even came close to the free market's performance. Delaney sold in trade to Trade Sports in 2003 based out of Ireland. In trade does not comment on the legality of customers in other countries using its services. And who can blame them, especially when there are rogue states armed to the teeth with a powerful inclination to meddle with their subjects' personal lives and financial dealings, particularly with the foreign banks and businesses, you know, the USSA. The CFTC has been stiff arming trade sports since 2005 when stiff arming, I'm sorry, stiff arming trade sports since 2005 when trade sports first applied for permission to open a regulated futures exchange in the US. You see, while Intrade has nearly 100,000 members in over 162 countries, the bulk of its membership are U.S. residents. Yet on November 26, 2012, the U.S. CFTC filed a civil lawsuit seeking an injunction against allowing U.S. citizens to trade on Intrade's website. Why does the CFTC have such a bug up its collective butt? about in-trade according to brad palmer on the washington post blog quote in-trade wasn't merely allowing participants to bet on the outcome of events like elections or wars or the oscars the site was also allowing u.s customers to bet on the future price of things like gold or oil between 2007 and 2012 the lawsuit said if that's true it would mean americans were essentially able to buy and sell commodity options on in trade away from regulated exchanges according to the cftc that's against the law it was already difficult for U.S. customers to use in-trade since due to new banking regulations in 2012, U.S. customers were no longer allowed to fund their in-trade accounts with their credit or debit cards like non-U.S. customers did. This resulted in each trade costing U.S. customers $20. Now the CFTC claims that in-trade allowing U.S. residents to bet on commodity outcomes violates market integrity. How? It violates market integrity is something they'll never say because it's total BS. From government thug David Meester, the director of the CFTC's Division of Enforcement, quote, it is against the law to solicit U.S. persons to buy and sell commodity options, even if they are called prediction contracts, unless they are listed for trading and traded on a CFTC registered exchange or unless legally exempt the requirement for on exchange trading is important for a number of reasons, including that it enables the CFTC to police market activity and protect market integrity. What a joke. Anyone paying attention knows that the CFTC and any government agency does nothing to protect the integrity of anything. 
What they do is protect their fascist manipulated markets over which they exercise extreme control to tip the scales towards Goldman Sachs and other Wall Street fascist companies that do whatever they want. To translate, what criminal meester really means is that in trades operations place these bets outside of U.S. regulatory control via the CFTC and even though the customers were happy and the market was self-regulating the government needs to throw its weight around and interfere with every exchange in as many parts of the world as possible. In trade dealt fairly with its customers something you cannot say the same for the big banks and brokerages in the US remember MF Global where they stole all the customer money and its predictions as determined by the direction of the majority of bets were consistently accurate Liberty defending investigative journalist John Stossel put it well quote these regulations don't help police market activity when people make money on in trade in trade sends them the money there are no allegations of fraud customers are happy with in trade judging by increased activity on the site over 50 million dollars was bet about whether obama or romney would win and it goes on uh, excellent article by jeff berwick uh, now we know that the cftc the whole thing is a joke because there is no uh, delivery of anything on in trade so it's actually uh, what uh, the uh, comex is but alleges it's not the CFTC is a commodity futures trading uh, Commission so they regulate the trading of commodity futures there are no commodities delivered on in trade in trade does not deliver anything these are simply predictive bets about future events so to say that a future event, whether gold is going to be above $2,000 on a certain date or below it, to say that that is a regulated option on commodities is ridiculous and absurd. Of course, we know what the CFTC was doing. It was just strong arming them by the threat of fines. And of course, they backed down just like foreign banks are backing down and not doing any business with American customers. So of course that's going to accelerate the exodus from the United States uh, from people who want to avoid these types of totalitarian controls now the big story related to that of course is going to be the Bitcoin market that's why this is so important for Bitcoin now we have a site I covered on the blog bets of Bitcoin and uh, I thought of forming my own but honestly I don't have time so but uh, you can imagine there will be plenty of sites popping up where you can do exactly what you did on in trade uh, using Bitcoin so my suggestion would be that if any of you have uh, a big mailing list of US in trade customers that you would mail them a link to the Bitcoin client you would mail them some links to some of these bets of Bitcoin type sites and suggest that they uh, continue their business with uh, the Bitcoin instead which is completely legal there's nothing illegal about using bitcoins to bet I covered the um, uh, seals with clubs uh, poker room and uh, these things are only going to grow uh, as the Bitcoin grows so fantastic news for the Bitcoin bad news for in trade subscribers in the United States but very very good news for bets of Bitcoin and other sites like that now the next big important story that I want to look at is this story about the BBC this was a story about the having of the reward on Bitcoin and uh, you can see that the link is now working it was not working at the time that I made this post it uh, it stopped working it started working this is a screen cap from BBC News that I uh, that came up on my screen when I tried to get to the story now that came and it went uh, this is the original link here's the 404 message and uh, then uh, it seems to get restored and I put on my last update that I'm still researching the issue so for those of you who are network engineers like I am uh, you begin to investigate these sorts of stories by doing uh, a number of uh, technical investigations. First thing you're going to do is you're going to do an NS lookup and try to find out this web page, who hosts it, what IP the name servers are pointing to, and where that actually is at. 
uh, then you're going to do a trace route there and see if you're actually going there and uh, you're going to jump on to some route servers hosted by other ISPs to see if your uh, traces take the same path. Now once you've done that and you determine that you're actually going to the site uh, you're going to want to start jumping out to proxy servers so probably one of the most popular is hide my ass uh, you can type that in Google but you can also type in uh, anonymous proxy servers by country basically what those servers allowed you to do and uh, we'll just go ahead and take this link we'll do a copy link location and then we'll go out to uh, hide my ass and uh, and see what we get on that so that is basically an anonymous proxy server which allows you to well it didn't take me there so it allows you to uh, go to a web page well it's not it's not letting me get to the site so uh, what it does is you paste the site in that you want to go to and what it does is it allows you to surf from a different location and that location is not going to uh, take the same path to where you're going and uh, so that's going to allow you to test whether it's just you that's experiencing the issue or whether it's uh, someone else is also ex experiencing that issue so that's where you go now at this point in time all of these anonymous proxy servers are showing the same thing they're showing that uh, that story is showing up uh, so that takes us a little bit deeper down the rabbit hole once you've done your basic name server research your routing research your IP lookups then you get into these complex things called content delivery networks and uh, that goes deep down the rabbit hole of Akamai and uh, how these CDNs work uh, basically the basic concept I don't have time to go into it here but the basic concept of the CDNs is that uh, they provide for the ISPs a way of saving money because what they do is they cache copies of where you're going at a closer location so if you're going from uh, say New York to all these places in Europe uh, what the CDNs will do is cache copies of stuff in New York and uh, most of the content that you're pulling down is actually coming from a cache server somewhere in New York the big player of course is uh, Akamai and uh, they're uh, the big provider in that area that most of the ISPs use so whether this issue that we saw with the BBC and my initial story that uh, the story was spiked uh, if if it's true that the story was spiked uh, then this 404 was actually coming off the server at the BBC but it's quite possible that the 404 error was actually coming from the CDNs that seemed to be the case because we had a lot of people from Europe showing that they could get to the site uh, people who jumped out to the proxies were able to get to the site it was just a lot of people from the United States uh, it is now uh, fixed and you can see the original story well no it's not fixed now I'm back to a 404 error so uh, it, it seems to be going back and forth and uh, my guess is it probably has to do with the CDNs and uh, how the cached content of that site is blocking people from getting there from the United States as far as I know so that's a very interesting story who is behind that how did they order that why did they order that and why are they so interested in blocking readers of the BBC from finding out about Bitcoin uh, again uh, it's very similar to the Gutenberg press in the attempts to squash it they actually promoted it because uh, as soon as people saw that uh, there was a potential clampdown on one printing press 
Then, of course, they went and made a whole bunch more. Uh, that may be the case with the cryptocurrencies. The Bitcoin may be the first of many, or it may actually be uh, the most successful one that isn't uh, compromised and therefore becomes uh, the modern-day uh, printing press that changes the world. And uh, we'll talk to you next time.